Recently, Mark Brown from the Game Makers Toolkit YouTube channel organized the GMTK Game Jam. And in this Game Jam, participants had to develop a game in 48 hours following a specific theme, which this year was out of control. I had the opportunity to join this jam, and together with a great team, we developed the game Tilt Quest. And in this video, I want to share more about the creation process and how we made the game within the 48 hour limit. First of all, the team was composed by four members Will Anders, Scruffy, Mick Mick, and myself. Me and Will took the responsibility behind most of the code, while Scruffy and Mick Mick were going to create the 3D models and sounds for the game. When the theme was announced, we started doing a brainstorming session in which we discussed possible ideas and how this game could work. But ultimately, we came out with the concept that the character itself would lose control and instead you would have to move the stage to make things happen. This was actually inspired in some physical games that we all brought up in the discussion. When we got to that point, we immediately started thinking of some existing references such as the Super Monkey Ball series and the Kirby Tilt and Tumble game. We noticed that most of the time in those games, the player would avoid enemies and obstacles. So based on that, we wanted to try out and create a gameplay where you would directly attack enemies. And that's how the concept was born. A game where you would tilt the level for movement and use elements of the stage for actions. So we started off by opening Unity and prototyping the basic tilt mechanic. We found out this very neat function in Unity called transform.rotateAround, which rotates any object given a specific pivot point. So we structured the scene to have one paired object for the whole level while the character was separate from that. For the attack mechanic, we added some cylinders in the stage and used the onCollision function to detect when players touch them. And when that happened, we added force to the player's rigid body and activated a core routine that made the player stay in attack mode for a while. In the visual side of things, this would also change the emission color of the player. At this point, we realized that even though the rotate around function was great to prototype, we needed to implement this in a different way because this method adds to the existing rotation and we figured it would make more sense to have the tilt relative to the axis input. We also tweaked the settings of the player's physics materials and even the physics settings of the entire project to improve the game feel and add more control to the movement. When talking about the game visuals, we all came to the conclusion that it would make more sense for the game to look very toy-like, and our main reference for this style was the remake of Link's Awakening. With that in mind, Mick Mick started making some 3D models of how the level would look and Scruffy started creating the concept for some enemies in the game. One enemy was a sort of a kettlebell pig, which would perform a ground pound and hit targets at a certain range. And the other one was a little bug enemy that would shoot projectiles. Back in Unity, Will started prototyping these enemies. The kettlebell enemy detected targets around it by using an overlap sphere, and the bug enemy would shoot new spheres by instantiating prefabs. And while we were testing, we all realized that it would be a super cool addition to the game if those projectiles could also be dangerous for the enemies, making the game mechanic even more important. After a while, most of the 3D assets for the game were ready to go, and so we added them into the project. The idea behind the character is that this was a hero ready to embark on a journey, but after stumbling on the ground, he accidentally transformed himself into a ball. So with this in mind, I started improving the effects in the attack mode by also adding a sword spin. With all these things in place, we started working on the level design using ProBuilder. We filled the world with enemies and we also made sure that there were plenty of interactable objects for the player to attack those enemies. When enhancing the visuals of the game, we wanted to add a super strong depth of field effect to make things look tiny. One nice feature we used to keep the player in focus at all times was to use the Cinemachine camera volume settings to set a specific focus target, which would adjust the distance of the effect automatically. Then in the last day, Scruffy composed an amazing music track for the game, which included a separate beat track. The idea behind this was to fade the beat track in and out based on the character's velocity. 
He also created every sound effect for everything that happens in the game. And of course, at the very end, we were basically rushing to make a start screen, a logo, and finish up the main game loop. And with only three minutes left in the clock, we managed to submit the build. And this is how we made Tilt Quest. You can try out the game right now by downloading it in the itch.io page. Just follow the link in the description. I want to take a moment to say a big thanks to the team. Will, Scruffy, and Mick Mick are the only reason why this project ended up being so great. Please make sure to follow these amazing folks, which I'll also put links for their socials in the description of this video. And also a big thanks to Mark Brown for organizing this game jam. His channel is seriously amazing and this game jam was a lot of fun. And let me know if you also joined the jam, because I would love to play your entry. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more game development content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.